everyone, welcome back. Now today we got something special. I've been sitting on this for a while, this beautiful jar. Been sitting on it, ready to plant it for a while. And today, getting ready to go away, I was cleaning up a bunch of stuff. And I thought, today's the perfect day because I have to take care of a bunch of the plants that you see behind me. I had to take care of a whole bunch of stuff, get a bunch of stuff set up because I'm going to be away for an extended period of time. So I thought, what better time than going and getting it set up today? So hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Let's take a quick peek. But before we get to that, let's roll the intro. <laughs> All right, you guys remember the, the little uh, greenhouse that we had growing in the back of our laundry room there? It kind of got out of hand. I ended up, uh, there's a lot of plants that were just overgrown with each other, and I realized that I'm going to need something different. So I kind of cleaned it up a little bit. The Cebu Blue is thriving down there. It's such a weed. It's growing absolutely everywhere. One of my little Phragmopidiums. I got some different types of, uh, I believe these philodendrons, like, like a Boletii type here. I've got a couple of them that came up. I've got some more ferns from different, some for different vivarium builds. And I've got this beautiful uh, Cysis, uh, I think it's Amazonica. Uh, beautiful, they call it the Rex Begonia vine, but it's not a begonia whatsoever. It looks really, really, gives a nice splash of color. Now you see it, the throat forms these nice little tendrils. So it absolutely grows onto absolutely everything. It's rolled around and tied itself on there. So that's the main one that I want to keep going in here. My Esqueleto looks absolutely horrible because it's just being neglected. Now I set this up recently, not recently, but I mean yesterday and today, and it's basically to be able to contain and have grow bins for all the different uh, plants and so forth so we can take cuttings for a lot of the animals and vivariums and things that we need so forth. So these are all, just bear with me, a lot of this has just been set up in the past day or so. I just got back from a big expo, so a lot of the plants are brand, brand new. But some really, really cruel microgrammas and magravias. I have no idea what that little leaf is, but it's super cool. It just popped up in the middle of that thing. We're gonna let that just kind of take off and thrive. Different types of uh, magravias and Micrograms and things like that. Nice little things, all from understory laboratories. Uh, one of my uh, Persian vines, it's grown really, really well. And I got some other little vine there that was in one of the house plants that I took some little cuttings and threw them in there, see if it'll take off. But that way I can always cultivate whenever I need. Okay, and then in here, we got a nice little uh, aquarium plant here that we haven't used yet. That's gonna be for a vivarium. So we got some nice little stuff growing there. This one's a catch-all of all the stuff that was just sitting in the greenhouse, just rambling, different types of philodendrons and kind of catch-alls. So there's nothing exciting in there. My biophytums are doing absolutely great, looking like a little forest from Jurassic Park. Uh, we got a nice tub of different types of bromeliads growing up. Those are going to be used for uh, one of these vivarium builds that we're going to be doing. And then almost everything in here, minus the resurrection fern, all these different begonias and different things like that. This is all stuff that I just brought back recently from the last expo. And some of these things might be used in some of these recent projects we're going to be working on right away. But let's get back to that Viv build we're talking about. All right, for the task at hand. So you guys saw that rack behind me. We kind of saw some of the plants poorly, but you get the idea. They're basically high humidity chambers, good light. And they've got gaskets on some of them to prevent any introduction of fruit flies or anything like that, gnats and stuff like that. I do have to install some vents on them. I probably won't get those back, but I will be using some different types of vents to let them air a little bit better so there is some air circulation. And then I have a, a very, very fine fabric that is used for noceums, which is those little tiny, tiny bugs. And I've ordered some of that fabric that I'm going to put little squares of that fabric in each one of those vents to prevent any animals from going back and forth. But let's get back to this. So this basically is, a, is the same sort of thing. It's just a bit more decorative. It would be a high humidity chamber. And the plant in particular that I've been talking about that I've been wanting to put in this is some of my pitcher plants. Now I have a lot of these different types of pitcher plants and different things. And unless they're in a really high, high humidity environment, they just do not do well. So I thought this would be perfect. The problem being is because it's somewhat rangy, we've got to raise it up a little bit and give it some. So this one's actually a little bit big for using in this, but this is what we're going to do today to get this one going. So I think to start off is that we're going to get it ready is we want to raise it up off the ground. So we're going to want to put in a drainage layer, we're going to want to put in some screen netting, and we're going to want to put in a bit of soil, and then we're going to raise the thing up a little bit, and uh, that'll, that'll give it something to some, some, some substance above the ground so it'll be able to dry out a little bit, but then the humidity of the environment in whole will help the plant out. So let's put it on a time lapse. Let's take care of it.
right, we've played around with it a little bit more. We've added a few little pieces of, we have that nice piece of wood, that weather-worn wood. We've added a couple of little pieces of little, little tiny pieces of spider wood just to give it some, some visual interest. And then we go from dark to light, dark to light, dark to light again. So it looks really, really good in my opinion. We're gonna go and moisten the whole thing down really, really well because we wanna make sure that the moss that the Nepenthes is growing in, the tropical pitcher plant is growing in, stays nice and evenly moist. And then I'm gonna add a few accent plants. I found a couple of little things in the bins that I could that I could harvest. One of that being that Polynesian ivy, that beautiful begonia rex vine. It'll add some nice texture and color. We've got little pieces of that that we can take. And then I also looked and I found that I have some different uh, pieces of different ficus and so forth. These are nice little cuttings that'll easily grow very, very well in this type of humid environment. And then I think we're gonna go and add a few different types of botanicals of some sort, just to give it some visual interest. And then we've got to add a little bit more life to it. And I think I'm going to have a helper for that part. turned out really really well i think it was fun to build and i've got my little helper she's been kind of helping me behind the scenes but she's here for the grand finale to be able to go and finish it off so we've got the beautiful nepenthes nepenthes is a carnivorous plant you guys know that i keep a lot of different types of carnivorous plants these are tropical carnivorous plants carnivorous means they eat bugs bugs so to eat bugs, that means we're going to have to feed them because they basically they've evolved in an area where they cannot basically uh, sustain enough uh, nutrient out of the substrate because these are generally epiphytes, meaning they'll often grow on the crotch of a tree or different on cliffs and so forth. This is why we kind of raised it up in this vivarium and planted it this way in that little piece of cork bark. You know, I think it looks really, really well in these nice little touches of the little tiny pieces of ficus and that Polynesian ivy, a few little botanicals. But I think we're going to, add, to have to add a couple of things. And if we're going to add bugs, we may as well add beneficial bugs. And by beneficial bugs for a vivarium, we need cleanup crew. So what are we going to add, Paisley? Tell them. Isopods and springtails. That's right. So some isopods we're going to be using. Well, these ones are called powder orange. Mm -hmm. These are little tiny, tiny isopods. We'll get a close-up of them. And we'll show you guys what they look like in a bit in the video and then we're going to be adding some white springtails and i've got a whole i've got lots of cultures of these and add them to all the different vivariums and they're going to eat up all the little waste products and stuff so do you want to put the the isopods in paisley yes okay go ahead dump them in there let them go yay they're all over the place they, you think they're going to like their new house yes and then i will go and add some of the springtails i don't want to add too much of the the dirt water but we'll add some of the springtails to the mix and the springtails, that's lots. You only need a few of them and they will take care of everything. Kindly for watching, my friends. What do you think, Paisley? Did we do a good job? Mm -hmm. You tell them. Don't tell me. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Paisley says we got the thumbs up. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Uh -oh.